Hey everybody, Professor Sorensen here. Uh, I realized something over the weekend. I provided you with a video on how to use the iLabs to do your job assignments. Now that video is good. You can definitely do what we do in that video because what I do is I download a piece of software called Putty and it allows you to log in to the iLabs and then once you're on an iLab machine you can use the Java there to do your assignments but there's a new way to do things that's a little bit easier and also offers perhaps a little bit of relief for people with Chromebooks um, I'll explain as we go along but basically what it means is that you can just use a web browser in order to access your iLab account and use an iLab computer now the first thing I want to do and let's do it right now is go to the CS webpage cs.ruckers.edu and you can see all kinds of information about the undergraduate and the cave and, and requirements and all kinds of stuff but if you come over here to resources and you go to technical and support services why this is taking so long I do not know always something okay finally we were there and you'll see over here under students it says computer labs and remote access go ahead and click on that first selection right there and now we're going to wait again forever unreal okay you can learn about the iLab cluster and the different iLab systems what I want you to do is come up here to accounts and passwords click on that and click on account management let's see how long this is going to take there we go this is where you want to be to activate an account on a computer science system if you have well if you're a CS major or you're taking a computer science course that's 111 or higher which you are you have access to an account so go there and create your account the reason I'm showing you is because you're going to need it if you want to log into the systems using web login okay so go through that process look at all these resources read the stuff on the website come here and activate your computer science account all right then from a browser go ahead and grab a blank window and go to weblogin.cs.ruckers.edu all right it pops up for me already and you're going to see that it redirects you to a page set that says apache guacamole and what that's going to do is it's going to from the web allow you to log into a machine i'm going to come in here and i'm going to put in my cs password now your cs password can be different from your net ID password you're going to see when you create your account you're going to be able to create a new password you can make it different you could keep it the same your mileage may vary I click login and it shows me all of the different machines that you can log into that are all networked together now you can see over here you have oh actually it's alphabetical it's not even by labs so I usually go to Python, which is python.cs.ruckers.edu. It's a machine that's in the cave. So I'll click on that and I'll wait for guacamole to connect to me. And what happens is you get the graphical user interface that I would get if I logged into the system down in the labs. Now mine's a different, a bit different. I have the background and I have things set up a little differently, but when you get up and running what you're going to do is I click over here to activities and I can say show applications and you can see all the different applications you can use okay that are here on the Linux machines in the labs okay what I'm going to do and I'll do it this way because this is probably what you're going to see is at the bottom is Visual Studio Code so I can just click on that one click two click to click and it brings up visual studio code okay logged into the iLabs I'm using Python down in the labs 
and I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file and I'm going to say open folder and it's going to show you the different file directories that you have. Now, if you're just starting out with Linux, you really in this context, you won't. This is like double clicking on things and you'll be fine. I have set up a directory called F22 Hello and I'm just going to open that. So as you get used to using Visual Studio Code, you're going to see that you give it a folder where you're going to keep all your resources and all your things. I will explain this in a minute. As a matter of fact, let's just get rid of it. And then what I'm going to do is it has already set up for me a file called hello.java. Okay, so I'm going to click in here. Actually, is it even going to let me? Let's do this. Let's get rid of it and let's say new file and I'm going to start with a new text file. There we go. And I'm just going to start typing my program. Now, we haven't gone over this, so don't worry about it. I'm going to do a quick hello world. That's spelled right. Now, if you don't know yet, when you learn a new computer language, it is custom that we print Hello World to the screen with it, okay? Some of that may look a little confusing. We're going to explain in lecture. We're going to explain in notes, public static, what all that stuff means. But basically what we're doing right here is we're creating a class called Hello, and we're going to print Hello World to the screen, okay? So now I want to save this. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit save as, and it says, all right, save as is ready. Great. So what did I save it as? Why is this waiting? That was a fortunate piece of luck because I did not use profanity and I was about to. <laughs> All right, now we have it called hello.java. Forgive that little bit of delay and craziness. Sometimes this interface will make you nuts. So now I've saved it, hello.java, okay? And I am going to, I know we talked about it a little bit in my lecture, but we're going to go through the process of compiling the bytecode, and then we're going to interpret that bytecode to run our program. And I'm going to say new terminal, and we're going to do it from the command line on this Linux machine. Really simple, just like we talked about in class. Java C for compiler, hello.java. Okay. And now, if we were to look, I can do ls to list my files. I have a hello.class. That's the bytecode. So now I want to interpret that bytecode and run the program. I don't need the dot .class. I'm just going to say Java hello. Okay, nice little feature of Visual Studio Code when you use it here is that it's set up for autosave. So I can just go and type. Another thing with terminal, I can hit the up arrow and the down arrow and it gives me all the commands I issued before. So I can go up here and do my Java C again and then Java hello. And now it says hello there world. Okay, so you'll notice I didn't install any software. Right, I just went to a web browser and I used web login to log into an iLab machine that already has all the software installed for me. The only catch here is that perhaps it will help if you know a little bit about Linux because at home you're probably using Windows or Mac and this is neither. This is a, a different operating system. It's the Linux operating system. Okay, we do a lot of things with command line, but you're going to come to learn that command line is this little terminal window that I'm using right here in Visual Studio Code. So if you want to use the Java and the Visual Studio Code here on the iLabs, you can do it with just a browser. Hold on, I'm going to say clear, and then I'm going to say file, exit, and it's going to bring me back here, and then I am going to, well, no, I want to log out, right? Or is it going to let me log out? Settings, power off, log out. Here we go, log out. And I'm going to log out as myself. I'm going to log out, log out. Boom, and I'm done. So 
There's the syllabus. There's the canvas. So that's really quickly with some bumps and bruises because it took forever to load that web page. And then all of a sudden the save process goes a little haywire, but that's how things go sometimes. That's how you can use web login to log into an iLab machine. Okay. Super simple. We're going to do it again. I type web and it automatically brings me to web login right here. Type in my ID. Type in my CS password. Brings me to the list of machines. I click on the machine I want to use. And just like that, in 10 seconds, we're logged into a machine. You come here, you can click activities if this is your interface, and then you can see all the different apps you can run. Now, I set up this window over here to the side for all the things that I use a lot, Visual Studio Code, PyCharm, and here you're going to see, let me get rid of this first, you can grab a terminal window, and here you can learn a little bit about Linux, and you can practice with Linux. Okay, I can do an LS, and I can see I want to change directory, and go to iLab, and then when I do that and do an LS, there's all my stuff. Okay, so now I can change directory to CS111, and I can do an LS here and see all of the different directories that I have in there. You can see the one we just did, CDF22. If I just type in the F22 and it's unique, I can hit the tab and it auto completes the line. I hit LS and we can see the work we just did, java.hello, java.class, okay? This is the thing that when you're using this method of doing your Java code, you need a little bit of facility with Linux and understanding the hierarchical file system. It's not hard. It's kind of what you do with folders and Windows or with Mac. It's just, you know, things underneath things in a tree kind of system. And once you have that down, you can use the Java here. What you'll do, as you'll see in the coming weeks, is you would save your programs here. Then you would just get a web browser on your Linux machine, go to Autolab, and you could upload right from the Linux machine. It's not like you have to download anything to your computer and back and forth and anything like that. You can just go to the web, go to the web from here, go to Autolab, and take it right from the Linux machine up. So, all right. I wanted this to be short. I'm at around 15 minutes, which feels right to me. We are going to go over this in class. Also remember September 23rd, uh, 2022. If you're seeing this a couple of years in the future, don't go back in time for Friday, September 23rd from two o'clock until six o'clock in the cave is install fest. And we're going to have extra iLab assistance that can help you get Java installed on your laptop if you want to go that route. And we can, you know, do a JDK and get things set up that way. All right? All right. Then I'm going to get out of here. You all be good, and I will see you down the line. Take care. Bye.